Hey everybody, it's Gary here. I've been promising some tips, so uh, this would be my first tip and probably the most important tip for anybody starting to mess with Tesla coils. Um, this might help you out. I know I've read some other stuff before, like people have MOSFET failures. This is going to help you um, not have so many failures and help you understand a few things. So what this is, is a, it's a limiter. Um, and inside I've got some light bulbs and what this does is they're running series with the hot wire um, on the 120 volts so no matter what the size of the bulb you're only going to get that much power um, out of it so if I got a 60 watt bulb running series um, you know my circuit is limited to 60 watts so this way you can see what exactly your circuit's going to do when you power it on rather than just power it on and create a lot of damage you know if you don't have fuses or whatever uh, but this helps and if you look at it you might think oh that's a battery backup that's when that's exactly what it was this is an old battery backup i took out uh, all the stuff and modified it a little bit to hold some bulbs in there uh, so hang on let me break this open here and i'll show you inside and i didn't show breaking this thing apart because it's irrelevant but Basically in here what you see is this is one set and this is another one so um, they both have their purpose. You got two 60 watt bulbs here and these may be 100 sorry. Sorry you got 200 watt bulbs here the incandescent bulbs. So when I kick on the power to anything this this doesn't always just relate to Tesla coils. Um, my dad gave me the idea he builds guitar amps and before he powers on one of his amps he ties on a limiter to it to make sure um, everything in scope aesthetic. Uh, the one thing about a Tesla coil, especially if you're building the double resonance, is if you turn the circuit on, if your um, interrupter is zero, you know, meaning you're not doing, you're, you're not supplying five volts. So if you have zero, then you should have no lights on the uh, bulb once you power it on. But once you power it on, the bulbs are going to brighten up for just a second. That's basically if it depends on how large your capacitors are in your circuit. Um, you're going to preload those uh, capacitors basically. Now it doesn't really help much on the classroom coil 2, the bigger circuit. Um, that uses what I call a floating resonance. I don't know what everybody else calls it. It doesn't really matter. Um, <coughs> but basically it just uses a, a Schmidt trigger to pick up the frequency that it's resonating at and resonate at that. Uh, I'm going to show you a little more about that. Um, maybe help some people out. Um, I know there's probably some GDT confusion. Um, try to help clear that up. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. So this one here is 60 watt. Um, and if you notice on the front here, geez, 24 watt. Notice on the front here, I've got a, a little setup of switches. This thing, this thing's pretty old. Uh, it's been beat up and thrown around. And uh, actually, the switch, one of the switches, got burned up. So that's one other thing you got to look out for is you need some decently rated switches. Just some cheap switches aren't going to do it, especially if you think you might be running anywhere around 10 amps, 20 amps, um, which none of my coils run that high. Um, if you know, if you bought one, um, 3 amps fused, 4 amp fuse is about where I like to stick and, and run. So what I do is I use these limiters, or this limiter, to try to find my medium. Um, it really helps out. So it may not apply for you in, in every case, but like I said, I have two different options here. I have the 200 watts, or I have the 24, uh, I think it's 24, I don't really remember. But anyways, you, I've got the main power here, this turns it all on and off. I got another switch over here that switches these outlets to this outlet. And what that does is switches between no limiter and the limiter. This switch here switches between the two different um, bulb setups I have. So if, I, if I'm in the up position, I'm running on these two bulbs. If I'm in the down position here, then I'm running on this bulb. And again, these are in series with my hot wire going into the circuit. And that's the only way it's going to work. You can't put it in parallel because it's just not, it's not going to work right. So you have to be in series to limit the amount of current draw that you're um, pulling into your circuit. Now, now, I probably found the worst example to use here, but I've got my soldering iron plugged in, and I'm on um, this bulb right here. So we all know that a soldering iron doesn't really pull all that much current. Um, let's see, 30 watts. So you know, if I turn the limiter on, now see we've got our bulb. Now, 
the um, solder nine is running at full power. It's not being limited at all. The way you would know if it's actually being limited is if this bulb would be lit up all the way, basically. Um, and it's it's not, so it's barely lit up, meaning that we're probably getting full power to the soldering iron, but that full power does not exceed the wattage of the bulb. So and I think these other bulbs are blown, I'll show you on these. Actually, they're not blown. The reason they don't lit up is, um, see there's no bulb here. It's because our 30 watts is way less power than what our two bulbs is. So if I hooked in something different, let me, let me see if I can get another example. Okay, so I've got a, a transformer here. It's, you can't see it. It's, it's in this enclosure. You'll hear it, though, because it vibrates a lot. I basically burned this um, transformer up and then had to take it apart. Um, pulled all the plates apart and pulled one of the windings off. Basically rebuilt the transformer. And when I put it back together, I didn't polyurethane or any kind of sealing of those plates to quiet it down. So that's basically what happens there. You seal it up with polyurethane and it really quietens down the vibrations of those plates. But I did not do that. So if I turn this on, you'll see the limiter. Um, we're not even pulling full power from the bulbs. Uh, again, those are 200 watts. Um, they should be fully bright if this transformer is drawn, you know, 200 watts, which it's not. Um, there's no load on it or anything. If I put a load on here, those bulbs will brighten up um, as I turn the load on and off. But sit there, there's no load. Um, this, I mean, this definitely goes to show that any transformer that's running with no load is still consuming power for anybody who wants to argue that fact. Um, this, this little right here is, is really what made me convert my heating and air system over to a smart system that I made myself. And what that smart system does is does not allow that transformer to power on in the unit uh, until my thermostat calls for it. And when the thermostat calls for it, then it kicks the transformer on. So until my heat is calling to be on, I'm consuming no power from my units at all. Now let's see if uh, what happens when I uh, switch it over to the other one. Oh, I didn't mean to plug it. Now, there you go. See, now we're definitely drawing more power. Or, sorry, not more power, but all the power that that bulb can handle. And you're not going to exceed it. Um, that's why we call it a limiter. Uh, you may mess up the bulb. Um, I don't know. I've, I've never had that problem. All my circuits have been limited by the bulb so if I got a 100 watt bulb that's all the power I'm going to get through my circuit so I mean this is a good tip for anybody starting out with a test of coils or just basically building anything really and this is a good way to, to test and make sure your circuit's not going to try to to draw way more power than once you need it to I'm, I'm good for testing uh, and I don't know it's even good for certain operations uh, you know, for instance if you need to limit the power on something that wants to consume more power it's a good way to set the current uh, manually one thing you might also notice too is the transformer is not humming which indicates to me that this one single bulb is limiting the power down way too much for this transformer alright that's uh, pretty much it it's the limiter, um, basically in how I use it and what it's used for, and it's a good saver. Like I said, it'll save you money in fuses, MOSFETs, transistors, you know, whatever. Uh, it's, it's a good saver. Like I said, it's not just for Tesla coils. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. Like I said, my dad builds good guitar amplifiers, and he uh, uses a limiter before he fires up an amp for the first time every time um, and they're pretty cool on the, the, the guitar too because as you play the guitar the bulbs light up it's kind of it's pretty neat I mean, you know you you pull more more current as you're playing it I just noticed something I don't know if you guys can see it but I've got the limiter turned off but we're still drawing Probably just difference in potential, but who knows? Take care.